That ain't hip hop, no politics, no BS. RTJ4. That's all I'm saying. Um, look, man, we appreciate everybody. You know what I'm saying? Go check out the live joint that we did uh with Fantano Alfredo. Um, continue to support that because everything that comes from that goes directly to the protesters, um, bailing them out. You know what I'm saying? All the details in that video. But man, RTJ4. Um, I ain't gonna go into no to no intro or nothing like that, man. Look. Them motherfuckers been putting in work over the last five, six years, you know, say with their Run the Jewel series, and that'll be Killer Mike and LP. Mike, I have a, I have a, a question, and I don't, I don't know if I've asked this before, um, and I didn't go back into the other reviews to ask, but LP's production, does he produce like this for himself, or is this like a Run the Jewels type of, you know what I'm saying, like thing? Nah, this, this, his production style is different for Run the Jewels than it is for himself. Um, I feel like the production that he uses for himself is, a, I'm kind of getting tired of using the word experimental, but mm -hmm. it's a bit more experimental. It's a bit more off kilter. Um, Run the Jewels is still experimental and off kilter, mm -hmm. but I don't know, man. It's just a different, it's a different style. So, so let me ask, so, so is Run the Jewels just, is like louder, more in your face than his own? That's a good way of putting it. I think so. I think that his his personal style is more to me. It's more focused on the like the overall airiness and atmosphere of the track versus mm. Run the Jewels being more like bam, 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 yeah. bam. Yeah. Like you're gonna feel all of these all of these punches. But like, yeah. shit. Like like he said, man. Every other goddamn year, I'm brand new. And, yeah. and and it's been 20 plus years. You think that's a clue. Like he reinvents himself over and over and over. Like he's had so many different phases as a producer, man. And it's, at this point, it's kind of even weird to say, oh, that's a signature LP beat because I don't know that there is one anymore. Like the dude just does all of these different styles just really yeah. fucking well. But but there is a signature RTJ. Beat. Yes. Yeah. Th at this there point, is definitely. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, and it was so interesting. So like last night I was in the car with the wife and we were just driving around or whatever. And I was playing Alfredo and wifey loves that project. She loves this project too. But like I switched, I said, babe, did you listen to this? And she's like, I didn't listen to all of it, but you know, I have favorite tracks on RTJ4. So as soon as I put it on, she's like, turn it down. I said, babe, it's the same volume. <laughs> I, didn't change it. I did not change it, but that shit is so in your face. And also man, like just, Listen to all of Run the Jewels. I feel like it's 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 the perfect movie score to the movies I like. You know what I'm saying? I like action movies. I like cop chases. I like car chases. And this is like they make music for that type of shit. Like this shit is just so aggressive, so in your face. As soon as it comes on, the Yankee and the Brave. Oh my fucking god! And and I think I said it on on every on every review that we've done of Run the Jewels. It's like Killer Mike. And LP sounds so comfortable over this production. It's like it, it was tailor made for both of them, and it's so amazing. And, it, and it's so cool how they complement each other on it, man. Like this project, this shit is fucking hard. And then just with Pharrell and who 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 else is that uh, featured on that pro on that on that track? Zach Taylor, Zach Taylor Dillard, Yeah, yeah. Like He's that been the last two. Hmm. He's, He's been on the last two. Oh, okay. But yeah, like like that one, man, like, you know, RTJ is just not in your face just for the sake of being in your face. You know, Killer Mike and both LP be breaking shit down. Like that track there to me is so powerful. Just, you know what I'm saying? Look at all of these uh, slave owners on um, on your money. You know what I'm saying? Like this, man, like- they, they They're really intentional. So much. They're very intentional, very yeah. intentional. You know what it is. So I think it's super dope, man. And, and, and then like, they have not missed. Four straight projects, no misses. And I don't like, I just hope that this is not just like a limited run. I hope we get to RTJ 10. Yeah, I feel like this album came at a perfect, I feel like the time of this album and the content that they were spending on this album was perfect, man. It, I, you talk about, you talk about FIFA, you talk about something, this being a soundtrack of, your, of movies. This is the soundtrack, like I picture what like happening? what I've been seeing throughout the past couple of weeks, you know, what's going on. Like I play this album, and I can close my eyes and envision that because the shit that they were spitting on here, man, it's, it's one line on here that Killer Mike said was, it's, it's like 
it's fucking crazy on, on a few words from the firing squad where he say um he was talking about you know he's talking but my queen she needs a king not another junkie flunky rapper fiend friends tell her he could be another malcolm he can be another martin she told her partner i need a husband more than, I, than the world need a martyr i was just like that's like and that's like real that can be real shit that's going on in a lot of these black family homes you know what i'm saying that's that husband's that's that's in the, that's in the fight for real that's in the streets like that like that's a that's a real ass fucking line and what's I like crazy it. about that before mike yeah. get y'all ass to keep going <laughs> <laughs> Is that I was thinking that like I, I've thought that before I heard that lyric I've yeah. thought that about you know how he's kind of like revolutionary or whatever I was like I'm yeah. like how his wife and his, his kids feel about that I mean because you know Killer Mike can say some shit that can really you know <laughs> yeah you know, get his ass get his ass assassinated like he said in the record <laughs> yeah yeah so when I heard that line I was like oh man I, I was thinking that. Yeah, hey, y'all better let Mike go. Y'all better stop playing with Mike. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm used to it. I got played. That's okay. So go ahead, go ahead and finish me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Kill Mike. Mike. Hey. Look, yeah. look, y'all. As y'all can see, I've grown. Cause if this was 2008, Mike, I'd have been like, Nah, bitch, hold the fuck on. I said I was going. You know, but hey, is my mic on? Is my mic on? <laughs> can y'all hear me? <laughs> go ahead. Oh uh, shit, my bad. I'm sorry, Mike. Um, you ain't sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> um, yeah, walking in the snow, man. That's that's like one of my favorite joints on here, man. I, I I love I fucking love the beat, Gangsta Boot again, cause she's featured on there. I think on the second one, and uh, it's almost like she's like a, a like an honorary member of fucking Run the Jew, cause she fit them so well. Even just doing that hook, that shit was fucking dope as fuck. Um, the fact the fact that that's another like political charge, you know, track. I mean, there's a lot of them on here besides them talking they shit, like on Ooh La La, which is that got that dope uh, Dwick sample from Greg Nice um from gangstar uh just with a pharrell that shit that the damn hook that, and that bouncy ass fucking beat my fucking god this what's that uh shit that pharrell was saying oh yeah look at all these slave masters posing on your dollars get it like that shit man i yeah i love this shit man like this shit was just like so perfect for what we're going through right now like this is like this is the great shit to play to get me charged up and just be like hyped up that we have MCs out here that's talking about shit that's going on. If you want to know, oh, wh what these rappers are talking about, and we got MCs talking about this real shit that's going on, these guys, and they always had politically charged joints, even on the previous run of Jewels albums. Like, they always had joints that made you be like, okay, yeah, that's just some real shit, like on some public enemy shit. And that's what I feel like this shit is. It's like some real great public enemy shit that just gets you charged up. You got great ass lyrics, fucking LP on this production again. Like, like you said, people, this definitely has a run the Jewels niche, but it's like LP, each run the Jewels album, LP's production is always taking a step further. And this is like, God damn, like this, this shit is fucking amazing, man. But yeah, um, another joint, one of my favorite joints. Um, Never Look Back, I like that joint because it kind of talks about, it's the introspective. They kind of get their introspective on um, talking about them, you know, coming up and, and getting through life, getting through this tough system, political system that we've been in and shit. So I thought that was fucking amazing um pulling the pain pulling the pin thank you killer mike and lp like this thank you for dropping the album that many of us have been feeling and, and just giving us a soundtrack of what's going on right now i think fifo said that hit your expectations were pretty high for this and it's funny man whenever a new run the jewels album drops i get super nervous and super uncomfortable because i'm like <laughs> at some point they have to fuck up at some point like they have to have a miss and when this dropped, I swear to y'all, I didn't listen to it until the next day. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, man, I've been I've been disappointed too much over this past couple of weeks. I can't I can't take no more disappointment. So I put it to the side until my phone starts going off. Here come is, here come Falcone, here come a whole bunch of other people. Yo, yo. I'm like, all right, fine. I'll listen to it. And I sat down and I was like, am I bugging? Is this recency bias? Or did these motherfuckers seriously just put out the best record they've done? How do they keep doing this? And this one, it has a darker feeling than the other ones. Like, I feel like it, it, it just feels different. It feels urgent. Like this one lacks a bit of the humor that the other ones had. Like it feels mm, like this point. time they're like, we've, we've been joking too much. Good point. We'll still have a couple little jokes in there, <clears throat> but this one feels oddly cathartic for some reason. I feel better and calmer after listening to this album, after being so fucking pissed off for weeks. But getting into the music, Yankee and the fucking Brave, Black 
back at it like a crack addict, Mr. Oh, yeah. Black Magic. How the fuck do you start an album better than that? Mm. Ow. Right. That, right. When you Ow. say outdo themselves, Mike, it's like they always start albums off great. We I, I, like from, they, like they always come out the gate from what I can remember about Run the Jews. But it's like for me, it's like how do they top the way they came out last time? Like well, if you like, remember the the last two, the third song was a bit calmer. Yeah, but it still had a feeling to it. This one comes out pissed off immediately. Well, That's even with the one he's like, I'm about to bang this motherfucker oh, out. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like, they always come <laughs> yeah. in hard. <laughs> but I put a mirror on the goddamn screen. Let's go, LP. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> yeah, like, no, you're right, little, you're like, right, you're right. Yeah. They always come out hard. That's something I always notice about them. They always come out hard. But I, but I just thought that's just one that was just a thought I had. Go ahead. No, you're 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 right. You're right. I just yeah. meant. I guess I meant the song itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like the energy of this album, I feel like is is on ten the whole time. You know, stack <laughs> stack at it, a Mac with the black fabric. Like th- both of them came out the gate. Like we are pissed, and we're gonna let you know. And th- it starts off amazing, but that fucking fourth verse where they're talking about the standoff with the police mm. and mm. Killer Mike is inside and he's talking about how he has one bullet left. Either he can shoot it out or he can kill himself. And he's just like, fuck that, we going out. LP's like, run like you hungry and get your ass in the ride. Like <laughs> that shit, like that's how you fucking start an album, yeah. right? Ooh la la, and I promise y'all, I'm not gonna go for long, I'm not. <laughs> man, I, go I, ahead, I, I, man. I gotta get this go, out, yo. Go I ahead, gotta man. get this out. Go ahead. Ooh la la, I like that song when it first dropped, but I was like, man, this is a weird feeling to this song. But I was like, you know what? I'ma chill and wait until I can hear it in the context of the album. And hearing it there completely makes sense. For some reason, the ooh la la sample was a bit odd to me, but now I fucking love it. Man. It's like combined with that with that kind of sad, almost, um, almost off-key piano, mm-hmm. it just, it's perfect. It's it fucking is. perfect. Um, out of sight. Did that? Did that beat? I'm I'm surprised that B didn't say anything about this. Did that beat remind you of anything? DLC. I bet Ron will catch it. DLC. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's that's good. Good. Bro, that's when good. I put it on, I was like, is this it, it, it was chopped a different way though. The way it was chopped, it, it was, was chopped different. like backwards. Yeah. Like yeah. Like, like DLCs goes dun 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 dun, and LPs goes like dun dun dun. I was like. Did he, yeah. do he did that on purpose. Yeah. That was so dope, man. And and he and he gave a hint to it because he's like he's like run and here and you know how DLC you know how DLC comes out say one and here comes yeah. the two to the three yeah. and four. Oh, no, yeah. I didn't yeah. catch that. Yes, I was like, yeah. yo, Earl, he flipped that shit. So he flipped yeah. it like he flipped the the, the, the lyric and the beat. And the, the beat. Like, yeah. It was like, damn. Wow, I did, not, I did not catch that at <laughs> all. That's crazy. Cause for for like the first like three listens, I was like, maybe yeah, it just me. sounds like that. But then I was like, wait a minute. Now LP is a student. He did this yeah. shit on purpose. Yeah, yeah. But damn, that's crazy about the line. I didn't catch that at mm. all, man. Yeah, the way that they were trading off their verses was really dope. And y'all go to my Twitter. I said this shit the second they released the track list. I told y'all. I told y'all niggas. Blue <laughs> chains was going to fucking kill his verse. And when he said, I'm cool as AC, and you niggas, you just wanna bees. AC, no B, you just wanna be, a- man. I told y'all 2 chains wasn't fucking around with this motherfucking verse, man. Yeah, 2, Chainz, 2 Chainz been on a tear lately, man. He has. Man, he's been on a tear. Even like, on his album, even on his album, like for him to make yeah. that album that rapper go to the league, like, yeah, he, yeah. he, he he's some different shit. I love the way he's able to still be a funny ass dude, but at the same time, he's like, yo, I can be serious too. In the same verse. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? saying? Mm -hmm. Um, Goonies versus ET, that beat, that bass sound, the drums kind of sound old school a little bit. Um, And that's the one where Killer Mike says that shit about uh, ain't no revolution that's televised and digitized. You motherfuckers been been hypnotized and twitterized by silly guys. Yeah. Jesus yeah. fucking Christ! Yeah, how are you? He spit that shit out. Didn't he? Like yeah, Jesus bro. Christ! But yo, 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 <laughs> <laughs> bruh, <laughs> walking in the <laughs> snow. This is this is, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say it. I don't give a fuck. This is the best verses that these guys have spit since Run The Jewels has started. Flat out, flat out. 
get a dose of Dirty Cold and Colson's Cold Flow. I was like, okay, all right, here we go. But then when he moves into the whole lineup, that whole scheme about cages, mm-hmm. cages not built for one group. So when the cage is done and you're still poor, it comes for you. Like, Jesus, what? The, and the idea of pseudo Christians being cool with kids in cages, and and I'd say you lost your goddamn minds if you had one to begin with. I was like, <laughs> all right, I was like, all right, LP, LP just fucking murdered this song, and then Killer Mike came in and completely, one hundred percent matched that energy. Yeah. Uh, when he said, uh, "You're so numb, you watch the cops choke out a man like me until my voice." goes from a shriek to a whisper, I can't breathe. can't breathe. And the fact that he wrote this in, I had to read this, he wrote this in November of last year. Mm. And it's relevant right when this comes out. Oh, relevant. <laughs> that's a fucking shame. It is. That's a fucking shame. And yo, when he ended this shit and he said, never forget the story of Jesus, the hero was, hero killed, was killed by the by state. The state. Man. <clears throat> Man. <laughs> Rappers just quit. All of y'all just fucking quit. Cause it's like, how do you, how do you, even if you don't like hip hop, sit down and read the lyrics as a fucking poem. Right. Like this shit really touches your soul. I'm almost done, y'all, I promise. <laughs> Are you good, man? What do you think, just, man? just money. Just money. When L said, I got a Vonnegut punch for your Atlas Shrug. I was like, man, <laughs> what the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> this shit, man, and 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 Zach De La Roca, I'm going to tell you right now, stop fucking around. Right now is when we need your album, bro. We need your yeah. album. I'm tired of these fucking, I'm tired of these fucking, I'm tired of these, fucking these, these, these features, bro. The, the breath in me is weaponry. For you, it's just money. Bro, cut it out. Like his whole, his whole verse... He spazzed. He fucking spazzed. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Mm-hmm. But Jesus Christ, y'all, like, I cannot tell you how happy I was after I finished the first listen of this album. Because the first thing I thought, and I said this on a podcast that I was on a few days ago, the Mood House podcast with uh, with Chris from Moody Black. Yo, they didn't have to do this. Yeah. On the Jewels seriously could have put out a full album talking about how big their dicks are and how dope of MCs they are. And people would have been like, yo, this is the best thing ever. They didn't have to sit down and give you guys emotion. Killer Mike didn't have to give you guys instructions on how to how to organize and how to how to view what's going on with black people. LP didn't have to tell you how to be a fucking ally. They didn't have to do that shit. They would have made just as much money if they wrote an album about some bullshit. But instead they said, you know, nah, there's really fucked up stuff going on right now. We've been talking about it for our entire careers, Mm -hmm. but we're not going to stop now. And dude, I I promise y'all, y'all can call me whatever name you want to. This album almost made me emotional. I was just like, Jesus, man, like these guys are really trying to make people pay attention because we know they're going to go play these huge shows and a lot of the audience they're probably not going to be the typical people that might pay attention to what's going on politically or socially or even as activists or any of that kind of shit. But they're still, they're driving these ideas, these, 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 they're making you focus on what's happening with the world that may be happening outside of your own personal community. And I'm just blown away right now, y'all. I really am. This album is fucking incredible. Mm -hmm. They step it up every (laughs) single time. And this is now my favorite on the Jewels album. A lot of things I wanted to touch on. I'm trying to remember, but it was, see now you see why I don't ever want to go last, Rod. No, nah, I feel you, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it was just some things you said because I had some of those same thoughts. Like, like just for instance, like the last thing you brought up about um, obviously how they're intentional in their music or whatever, and when they go to these shows, like I was thinking about will 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 the people that are at these these shows really understand what they're saying in this music or are they just bouncing to the music and, and the energy or whatever and i and i'm wondering if this this version of run the jewels or this album is going to make them start listening and like can't they can't really avoid it right you hear a song like just and, and that hook it's like you can't disregard that you can't disregard what they're saying and and and, and i want to say and that's just one thing and another thing is um I think in the past, and I mean, I haven't had a chance to do like the proper, like uh, 
research I wanted to do on this, this album and just really dig into it. But because I wanted to go back and look at some of our other reviews, but if I remember correctly, I remember we, um, a lot of us, and I want to say Needle Drop on one of those, would, would really big up Killer Mike and not really give LP his proper credit. And I was listening, because it's easy, right? With Killer Mike, his, his voice is, he, his energy, his voice, he, he really just commands it, right? Mm -hmm. But LP, bro, I, I don't think I've ever realized like how he puts his words together. It's it's like the way he says things, like it's not even like double time, right? It's like, it makes it sound like it's double time, but it's not, it's just the way he phrases it. And it's like, not many people can do that. I, I've never, I don't know, maybe I haven't heard anybody to be able to put a phrase the way he puts it together. It's like, damn, bro, like how, I even tried to say something he said and I couldn't get it out. I couldn't get it out. I was like, fuck, how the fuck did he say that? It's like tongue twisters, man. It's like, no, this dude is really skilled. I see what you're talking about, man. This dude is really, really skilled at rapping, bro. I know Mike knows, but have y'all ever paid attention to what, how LP yeah. raps? Man, <laughs> like, even when we did, when we, on Cancer for Cure, I was just like, yo, no, nobody raps like this guy. This guy is his own he is his own template. Like he's his Bro, own. His, yes, yeah. he's his own. Yes, he is his own blueprint, dude. He's, I was he's, like, he's, he's, yeah, I was really, I really was blown away. And, and like I said, man, I, like ever since I've been reviewing with y'all, I don't get a chance to like listen to music the way y'all listen to. It. I just kind of listen to it on the surface and whatever. But now, you know, I'm yeah. doing the reviews with y'all. I'm reading and I'm looking. I'm like, God damn, I can't even say that shit. <laughs> I can't even <laughs> recite that shit he just said. Kind of like you, Mike. I didn't listen to it till the day after. But it wasn't a scared thing or whatever. It was more. <laughs> but I feel you though. I feel you. It's like, damn, are they gonna are they gonna top the last one? Is this one gonna be good as well? That's what yeah, that's what I said. You said a lot of things that I was thinking. And I was like, damn, they really did. Am I tripping? I had the same thought, man. I was like, am I tripping or this shit just as good or better than the last one? Like, how do they keep doing this? I think it's like they really, they really sound like they took even more time and it's been four years since the last album yeah, yeah. you know yeah. what i'm saying <laughs> if you remember like the albums weren't really spaced apart like that before it wasn't, it wasn't. and for some reason it really feels like they needed that break to chill out because because if you're an lp fan you know he he was doing like once every five years he was dropping something mm -hmm. yeah that was like his his sweet spot and i was okay with that i don't need an album every year but yeah. it seemed like they really took a break and they relaxed and they said, you know, this is what we want to convey on this next album. Like when, when we're talking about like slap in your face from a lyrical perspective and a, and a musical perspective, there's nobody in hip hop that does it harder than them. Yeah, because it, it's just the lyrics and the beats. Mm -hmm. It's like both, man. Yep. And I know Mike, you was talking about the first Yankee and the Brave, like how he comes in like, with the black addict. I even like after that when he says in a black natty hair maddie like your black yep. granddaddy, I was like, yep. God, <laughs> God. Right in that old maddie. It's so hard because you think about it's so vivid. You know all the black granddads, they don't give a damn. Yeah. It's like, damn. Ooh la la, that's another point you brought up, Mike. It was like, yeah, it sounds different on the album for me. Like, I didn't, I'm not saying I didn't like it before, but it was just like, oh, that's cool. That's a dope RG, R RTJ song. But on here, it sounds so much fucking better. And then I caught that last line when he was talking about the, uh, I used to love Bruce leaving, living La Vida Loca. And then he said, that, um, um, help me understand, I'm probably more of the Joker. Like the Joker uh -huh. And then he said, when when, uh, when you usher in chaos, just know that we did did it smiling cannibals on the island. It yeah. makes one on the silo. Um, oh yeah. my God, damn. damn yo. Oh, man. <laughs> I know, you, I know yo. you like that line, Ken, because you watched Dark Knight yeah. so much. And it was just like, yo, like, they really painted some very vivid pictures on this. And, and, and yeah, you think yeah. about even that itself ties into what's going on right now. And, and, and another thing Mike said was like, you, you know, it's crazy and it's kind of sad that they didn't just write this. Right. You know what I'm saying? This stuff has been going on and, this, and, 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 it, and it sparked them to write an album like this. Mm -hmm. and, and B, you brought up a very good point. Because I was trying to figure out like, who did this sound like? It does sound like modern day public enemy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and it's like, yeah. shit. Oh, yeah. Like, this shit is perfect, bro. It is, this shit dude. Like, so I don't think anybody can would be able to create an album like this that can depict the times that we are in right now. And I know we talked about that just now, um, just recently on um, on the Alfredo, how how um how Gibbs kind of touched on some things. 
Had a little line. This comes there. out, and you like, no, nah, they really went there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like Gibbs touched on a couple things, but no, these motherfuckers went there throughout the whole album, bro. Like, man, yeah, yo, man. Mike, Mike, start off his fucking bar. First of all, fuck the fucking law. We is fucking raw. Yeah. Like, I feel, and the thing about it is, like you just said, some rappers will will kind of go there here and there. Mm-hmm. That energy is throughout the entire project. Yes, sir. And there's no point where you get a chance to calm down. Nope. There's no point where you get a chance to just be like, all right, <sighs> until the shit ends. Yeah. It's fucking. Oh, well, as, or as, 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 as it goes. As it, or as it oh, ends. The sap. Yeah, yeah, they have a good way of bringing down the tempo, and I realized that at the concert, at the concert, they they do that as well. Like they'll bring bring it down some. Like yeah, man, this shit, man, it's, it's perfect. Like it, it, it's perfect, man. I'm sorry, Ken. Go ahead, man. No, nah, y'all good, man. <laughs> um, yeah, no, nah, it's straight. Um, I was trying to when when y'all were talking about when you listened to it, Mike and Rod. I was sitting here thinking when did I put it on and I think I put it on that night because it dropped the night we were doing the Alfredo live stream with yeah. Time, right? yeah. yeah yeah so I put it on when I left here um because I saw it was like 35 minutes long and I'm like okay that's it's about my commute time from here to the crib and I'm just not going to be an echo chamber so I'm gonna skip over a lot of stuff that I had because you guys have already said it uh quite eloquently I might add um but that first track though when that shit came on I knew I was in for some shit and you know normally we don't publicly talk about you know the albums um but I jumped on IG man I had to do a story because I just wasn't ready <laughs> like I was not fucking ready man and Are you the story? yeah just just the real quick one like when the shit came on because it was just so much energy and passion and the way Killer Mike started it off like it just there was nobody here and I had nobody to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> it took three songs before I left. I was that caught up in the music and sitting here just bobbing my head and just kind of swaying back and forth with just everything that was going on. And I was so surprised that the energy, as Mike just said, like it 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 stayed all the way through until kind of like what what Mod is pointing out, like never look back. It kind of started to wind down a little bit, and then you get to uh, a, a message to the firing squad. I probably jacked that title up, but um, but yeah, it kind of it kind of you know starts to wind you down a little bit. Even though I think the song after Never Look Back, it kind of picked back up a little bit after that. But they did a good job of kind of like you know bringing you back back down a little bit, but still delivering that that solid content and messaging. That they've had throughout the song, it was just delivered in in, in a different manner. But but yeah, man. I, and and the other thing I think because I've been playing it nonstop since it started. Mike, you talked about the beat changes. That was evident on Holy Kalama Fuck. Um, that was a really dope beat change. It was almost like a whole other song and shit. Um, yeah, I thought it was at first until I looked at the track. I was like, oh, that's a yeah, song. Yeah, I thought that that was dope. Um, and um, I I. I I really like just a lot. I think that might be one of my favorite songs in there. You know, just the hook again about, you know, the slaves, like look at all these slaves on my dollars and how that ties back into capitalism and the the chase for that. And again, the, the elite and how the elite just take, take, take and don't give back. But walking in the snow. So I saw a lot of people talking about Killer Mike's verse deservingly slow. So I'm sorry. And LP's verse is not to be overlooked. And Mike already pointed out, but like the cage line was so fucking dope because we saw what's going on with immigration and stuff like that. And how he attacked like the, 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 um, the elite, the billionaire class in that verse and also the, the, the Christians as well. And it was a, it was a perfect, pairing with what Killer Mike was doing. Like, LP addressed this one section of shit that we deal with in society when it hit that, because that that line hit because the cage is not just for, like the cage, Japanese people have been in it, and now the 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 immigrants have been in it, and black people have been in cages. Yeah. And he was saying like, just because you're white, don't mistake you for being free. Yeah, Mike said it perfectly on that, man. Like, it's like, mm-hmm. LP was like, an he showed you how to be an ally. 
You know what I'm saying? It's like his support. I thought that was a great point. Yeah, yeah man, it was a really good point. You know, I think on uh, as the album starts to to end, that was a line that stood out to me. Uh, the the Toussaint line. Toussaint was the the guy that led the the Haitian Revolution, and he defied Napoleon. So I thought that was dope too that he put that in there. I think this is why artists should be allowed to take their time. Because if they rushed, we would have gotten a dope project, but I don't know if we would have gotten one as dope as this. And and that's what I loved about it because it was well worth the wait. And, you know, they deliver on every single level there possibly is. And it is my favorite Run the Jewels project uh, up to this point. I mean, it, it addresses racism, capitalism, the oppressors. Like it's 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 all of that in here, man. Yeah. How do you how do you make something sound so accessible and int like intricate at the same time? Like I don't it's know. like it, yeah. it, the way they figured out how to do that is amazing, man. Favorite tracks, man. This I feel like FIFA. You have to cut me off, though, son. Yeah. <laughs> you have to, you have to cut me. Mm -hmm. Favorite tracks. For me, give me Yankee and the Brave. Give me Ooh La La. Give me... This is going to be tough because there's only 11 tracks. Um, Give me Just. Give me... um, hmm. like, I can really say all of them. Give me Walking in the Snow. I'm, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there. Give me uh, Yankee and the Brave. Out of sight, walking in the snow, just holy comma color my fuck. Lemma fuck. Holy Kalama. Yeah, that joint. Yeah, getting brave. Give me shit. Give me ooh la la, man. I know it's a single, but shit, man. That it, it sounds great on here. Um Holy Kalama fuck. Um, give me pulling the pen and walking in the snow. Yankee and the brave. Walking in the snow, just Goonies versus E.T. Oh, fuck. Um, I'll go with Out of Sight. Mine is exactly the fucking same. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going Yankee and the Brave, Out of Sight, Goonies versus E.T., Walking in the Snow, and Just Money. I don't know if it's Just Money or Just. I, I, I kept yeah, saying, yeah. I've been saying Just Money because there's a, there's a there's a dollar sign in there and he says just money towards the end of his verse so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna cool. keep saying just money i think it's just money as well it, it, it's yeah even it's though it's, i think it's just stylized that way i think so yeah run the jewels if you're watching hey I, there's not much fucking for me to say you guys have been amazing from the beginning um your four projects in um there's nothing that I can say that, oh, you know, I, I you know, um, I want this to get better. This, look, you guys are naturally progressing in the way that people that care about their music should progress. You guys have something that is extremely unique in hip hop and you're using your platform in the way that it's meant to be used. So I appreciate that. This is an amazing project. Um, obviously, I'm looking forward to every single project. Like I said in the review, like I can't wait till RTJ 15. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm here for it. Killer Mike LP. Um, thank you. Thank you for, for making this wonderful project. This much needed project um, for me to listen to, for us as a people to listen to and, and, and digest. Um, you know, seven years, four albums. I, I think now, I mean, you know, when people talk about like favorite hip hop duels and stuff like that, I think definitely this album solidified you guys. When you mentioned the Outcasts and the Mob Deeps, you have to throw Run the Jewels up there now. You have to throw you guys up there. I know a lot of people don't before because, you know, of course, Outcast with the longevity, Mob Deep with the longevity, a lot of these other groups, but you have to throw you guys in there. You guys are now really in that conversation now when you talk about, you know, one of the best all time hip hop duels, you know, in, in this culture. That's funny, B. That's actually what I was going to ask y'all at the end of the review. Like, yo, when when can we start putting these dudes in the conversation? Oh, we, got, we, we got to. With this album, you got to now. One of the Jews, if you're watching, Killer Mike LP. Um, as B always says, thank y'all, man. Thank y'all for this project. And like Mike said, you guys did not have to do this, but you did it. And um, yeah, man, it, this this thing is solid through and through. It's right on time. Um, I mean, there's so much that I could say, man, but 
I mean, really, it's really not much to say, but but thanks, thank you for this, man. Um, thank you, thank you, LP, for being an ally. Thank, thank you, thank you, Killer Mike, for being the voice voice of us and, and saying things so eloquently and and just putting that message out there, bro. Um, like major respect to both of you guys. I will say that even outside of the music, like the the attention to detail and, and artistry and creativity that you guys put in everything is is exemplary, man, and, and, it, and it shows. And, you know, when it comes to this album, it's like, and this is why I, I got to take notes now because I'm getting old because I really, should, I wanted to open with this. Um, this album is what makes hip hop special. And, you know, there are a lot of different sounds and the, the hip hop has all many different forms that appeal to many different people. But this album is what makes hip hop special, where you can speak to issues and about issues and to certain people, and you can use your platform, your your followers to deliver those messages, you know, in a, in a time of need. And that's what I love about what you guys are doing. I think this album is perfect in so many ways, but more importantly, I think it perfectly represents what, what Dead End is as a collective. It bumps in the whip, it's cerebral, it's dope as fuck, you know, it's, it's heartfelt, it's revolutionary, passionate, it's to the point, and like, it encompasses all those things in this one album. And I think that's an incredible accomplishment. Nothing you guys sought out to do. It's just, you guys are just doing what you guys do best. And and I love you guys for that. Killer Mike, LP, I'll speak to Killer Mike first. Yo, thank you for being a voice. I think Rod said this, but I have to echo it. Thank you for being a voice of the people, man. We appreciate it. You know, not every rapper has, in my opinion, necessarily an obligation to do it, but I'm glad that people like you feel that obligation you feel that need to speak up for people that may not have a voice the way you have a voice like i said earlier you did not have to do this but i am so thankful that you did and i hope more people walk away from this album hearing the words that you said versus the way that you were saying them so this was an incredible album this is some of your best rapping and i am so excited to hear what you do next uh, whether it's with Run the Jewels um, or whether it's with you organizing and mobilizing some sort of political party, whatever it is that you're going to do, I am excited to see it. Um, LP, Jesus Christ, man, you fucking killed it on the production tip. Um, your beats on this album. I don't know how you get better and better and better and better with every album. And I already quoted this line earlier, but you said every other goddamn year I'm brand new. It's been 20 plus years, you think that's a clue. That shit is a fucking fact. Like you have reinvented yourself musically so many times and I'm, I'm just, I'm in awe of what, of what you're doing. And like I said earlier, thank you for being an ally. Thank you for hopefully instructing other people on how to be allies. And your rapping on this is stellar. Fucking stellar. You guys have now become one of the best hip hop groups in the game, period, period. And I'm just happy about this. I really am. And go hard, last words, the firing squad was fuck you too. I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> I feel like I've spoken enough. I'm probably about to get on Twitter and talk some mo. But yes, man, this is one of the best shit. Fuck that. This is the best album this year so far. <laughs> I'm saying it right now. And we're in June. I'm gonna fuck. Six years. Y'all rappers, you got you got a challenge. A be better than run the jewels four challenge. <laughs> Go out and see what you can do. But yeah, man, this album is incredible. Mm -hmm.